Alright, what is up everyone? Hello, hello, and welcome. How's everyone doing? Hopefully you're doing well. I am doing alright, I am soaking wet. <laughs> you're probably like, what the hell does that mean? I, uh, I was sitting up here for the stream, and I sat down, I had a bottle of water, and this time around when we went, uh, had some, bought the bottled water last week at the supermarket, um, we bought the El Cheapo brand, one of the, the, the local brands, I guess it's called Crystal Geyser or something, I don't know, I don't even know where it's bottled, I'm actually taking a look here, it says it's bottled in, it actually says it is bottled in California. So it is more of a West Coast bottled water brand. It's funny, depending on where you live in the United States, when you actually get bottled water, sometimes you can get different brands that are local. <laughs> we actually have this one brand that's very local to us. It's called like Indian Creek or something like that. And it's supposed to be from Washington State. But anyway, it was, uh, it was on sale, and we bought it. And you could definitely tell why it's a lot cheaper than the other bottled waters. I know this has nothing to do with today's stream, but I thought I'd tell you a little story to get you started here. So, the bottled water, first of all, it tastes fine. The water quality is fine. It tastes just as good as any other bottled water, okay? But the bottles are all deformed. And what I mean by that is, like, they're not flat at the bottom, so they don't even stand up straight when you try to put them down on, like, a, you know, a counter or a tabletop or whatever. And this particular bottle of water was like bulbous on the bottom, like it was bulged out, like they had put too much water into the bottle and, and it stretched the bottle out. So I said, all right, let me see if I can get this to stand up. So I'm getting ready here to, to start the pre-stream. I open the bottle of water and I take a sip and I'm trying to conform the bottom of this bottle of water so it'll be flat and I put it down and as I do this, the entire thing, like the bottom collapses in and the bottle of water erupts like a guy like it's called crystal geyser the bottle of water erupted like a geyser in my face <laughs> it's a boosh and it went all over my uh all over my desk here my little uh laptop desk went all over the pillow the next to me on my love seat went all over my crotch went all over my chest it completely soaked <laughs> luckily i had a bunch of uh paper towels in here so I managed to dry up a little bit. But finally, after doing that, they, then I was able to flatten the bottom of the bottle of water. So now it stands up. <laughs> <sighs> so anyway, there you go. There's a nice little intro for you. Completely soaked. Alright, so how's everyone doing today? Hopefully you're doing well. I'm doing alright. It's kind of hot in the office. I'm actually going to turn on the air conditioner. Because I haven't even started playing yet. It's already 80 degrees. And rising. Every day when I'm in here, it gets hotter and hotter. <laughs> and now that we're finally getting closer to the summer, right? Every week we're getting closer and closer to summer. Uh, we're going to be getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to use the air conditioner almost every day. Um, but I'm ready. I'm ready for Guile today in Street Fighter V. He's the second DLC character for the game. And I got a bunch to say about... Street Fighter V on the pre-stream today. Um, some interesting results that I looked up as I was waiting for the stream to start. I was looking around the internet for information in regards to Street Fighter V, and it's not good news. <laughs> Let's put it like that. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Street Fighter V Guile today. First, we'll be taking him into training mode, so I can try out all his normals, look for basic combos, special move properties, etc. Then I'll be going into probably challenge or story mode, one or the other. And then we'll do the other one that I didn't do. And then we'll be going online. So it's going to be every mode with Guile today, much like how I did with Alex when Alex was released at the end of March. Now, I know that today is not release day for Guile. Uh, I wanted to play him on release day. Unfortunately, in all their wisdom, Capcom decided to release Guile Thursday night. Don't ask me how that works. But yeah, they didn't release him until Thursday night. And, uh, you know, I was busy with stuff this week going on. So today's the first opportunity that I have to play with Guile. It should be fun. And as you know, when I usually do these sessions, they uh, it becomes a lot of videos. So I probably won't upload all the videos today. 
I'll probably record a bunch, and then I'll upload some today, some tomorrow. Uh, you know, stre stretch it out so there's fresh videos for you for the next few days, rather than just overloading, uh, you know, overloading my DSP Gaming channel with 50 Guile videos today. Okay? There will also be a new DSP Tries It today. That'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. That's a good one. Um, tomorrow, I'll be returning to Neo. You can actually see it here on my PS4 dashboard. It is the alpha demo that I played the other day. A game that is harder than Dark Souls. But I was having a lot of fun. And uh, even though it was incredibly challenging, I thought that it was something different. It, it, it took all the elements of Dark Souls and added a few unique elements that I liked. So, I'm definitely interested in playing more of that uh, tomorrow here on the stream. Uh, Monday, I'll finally be playing Star Fox again. Okay? I know that I played it a week ago, and I was so disappointed with how this game turned out that I've refused to play it all week. That's very much the truth. I had many opportunities I could have played it, and I just kept putting it off because I was so pissed off. Yes. <clears throat> so, yeah, that'll be uh, Monday. I'll finish up Star Fox, and then I'll be reviewing Star Fox Monday night. And then on Tuesday, I will be playing the Overwatch beta. I actually have an exclusive one-day pre... Uh, pre not premium. What's the word I'm looking for? Early access. There you go. One-day early access to the Overwatch beta. Because I pre-ordered the game. So, that'll be fun to be playing Overwatch Beta on Tuesday and possibly even Wednesday. We'll have to see how it goes. This week also, I'll be returning to Persona 3 for the first time in weeks. I know people liked that playthrough and were disappointed that it went on hiatus for a couple weeks. That'll be coming back this week. And, uh, we'll see what else happens. You know, there's gonna be more going on this week. I'm just not sure what yet. I don't wanna promise anyone, uh, anything until we get a better idea of how the week is looking. Okay? I may not beat the Neo demo tomorrow. Maybe I'll have to play it again sometime this week. In which case, maybe I'll do that this week, you know? We shall see what happens. Um, but the month of May, ladies and gentlemen, is starting to stack up to be more busy than I had originally anticipated. I thought that it was going to be a, a, a mostly dead month, but I think I may be wrong. Here, let me quickly run through this. So, the first week of May, we got the Overwatch beta. That's pretty much it. It's kind of a slow week. You know, the other game was Battleborn, but when I played the beta of that, people didn't even like it. So I said, screw it, I won't play it. I'll, you know, try to do something else. Number two, the second week of May. Very busy. Uncharted 4 and Doom. There you go. And then the third week of May, we've got Homefront, The Revolution. I'm not sure if anything else comes out that week, but I know for a fact that's the big thing. Okay. Uh, number four... The fourth week, we've got the full retail release of Overwatch, plus apparently this new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that some people have been asking me to play because I played the last one, it was god-awful, and I stopped playing it because it was so bad. Uh, I may or may not. We'll see. We'll see, but I may. I think I'm going to play it. I think so. And then the final week of the month, we've got One Piece Burning Blood, a One Piece fighting game that also has a story mode with... Uh, you know, a narrative similar to, say, how the Naruto games have been. And I've not played, uh, you know, a One Piece game in quite some time. In fact, I've only ever played one One Piece game. And never really got back to the series, so I think I'm going to play that. So, that is the huge month of May. Tons of games, tons of releases in May. So, I think the month will be pretty good overall. I think that it's actually going to be a pretty solid month. In comparison to what I originally thought it was going to be. Ooh. Ooh, my gosh, excuse me. Ooh. Very, very gassy this morning, I apologize. <laughs> um, so very briefly, I'd like to talk a little bit about Street Fighter V, and then we're going to get started with today's stream, alright? Um, Street Fighter V. For those who have been watching my content of it, my coverage of the characters, for those who have been enjoying everything that I've been putting out, and for those who just like the game, maybe you watch fighting game streams, right? You get into the hype of the competitive community and all of that. <clears throat> um, unfortunately, I don't have some good news for you. No, I don't. Street Fighter V, from all 
financial sales reports is a huge sales flop. So if you're not aware, Street Fighter V, uh, first of all, Capcom wanted to sell 2 million copies of this game worldwide. 2 million. That's what they were looking for, okay? Since its release in mid-February. Um, unfortunately, not even close. And the bottom line is at this point, most people who would have bought the game already have. You know, Street Fighter is not a series where, oh, six months down the line, I'm going to buy the game. You know what I mean? It's pretty much the same kind of, you know, the same kind of game. It's, just, it's not like there's going to be, but besides the DLC characters, right? It's the same game now that it'll be in four or five months. And, uh, you know, basically what they're looking to, there's no, there's no way to market a fighting game months into its launch. Street Fighter V had a chance to be huge when it was released back in February. But it did not sell. Uh, compared to Street Fighter IV, let me give you some perspective here, okay? Street Fighter IV, when it was released in 2008, sold 2.5 million copies in its first month of release worldwide. 2.5 million. Street Fighter V sold 700,000. <clears throat> One third, actually less than one third, of what Street Fighter 4 sold. Ouch. And now, to give you some perspective on getting caught up, um, the game, at this point, has sold around a million. It's, you know, sales reports can be iffy on if it actually did sell the million or not. Some are saying it did, some are saying that it didn't, it was just under. But... <clears throat> Basically, the bottom line is, the game is a huge sales flop. Now, here's what you got to realize. This is, a lot of, a lot of that is probably due to Capcom. Alright, number one, Street Fighter V was only on the PlayStation 4 and PC. Okay, that's it. If you remember, Street Fighter V, excuse me, Street Fighter 4, saying it the wrong way, Street Fighter 4 was on Xbox 360, PS3, and eventually released for PC, okay? So, initially, Street Fighter 4 had a huge installed gamer base. People who had that current generation of consoles all were able to buy and play the game. Right now, that's not the case. Right now, only PS4 owners or people, you know, with PCs who can run the thing could actually buy it. So, number one, that's a problem. You know, already you've, you've limited your customer base... But, from all reports, the reason it, the reason behind that is because Capcom couldn't even afford to make the game. Capcom had no money to really fund this game, and so they had to partner with Sony. Which was a good move, in my opinion. I mean, if you have no money, find a strategic partnership, an investor, right? Who's going to mutually benefit from it. So that you can make your game, and that's what they did. But, because of that, it's not on Xbox One. And I think that actually hurt the game big time in sales, okay? Number two, Capcom held several betas for Street Fighter V, none of which actually went down without a hitch. If you remember, they started betas as early as, what was it, July of last year? So when you have betas for a game that are running, you know, six to eight months before the release of your game, and every single time you do a beta... Matchmaking's not working, can't get matches, matches are dropping, can't connect to the servers, blah, 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 blah. People lose confidence in the game. Even though it's a beta, people will lose confidence. It's absolutely true. And I think a lot of people who maybe were interested in Street Fighter V initially were completely turned off by all these reports that these repeated betas don't work and aren't getting any better. And so they didn't buy the game. Number three, Street Fighter V had one of the most disastrous game launches in history. When it launched, again, it didn't work. None of the servers worked. No one could play online whatsoever. And they released a bare-bones version of the game so that the game could be released early in time for a tournament circuit rather than actually releasing a game full of content. This completely backfired against Capcom. <clears throat> it made them look absolutely terrible. It really did. It just made them look really terrible. And it basically showed that when they made this game, Capcom was only geared towards working towards the competitive community and didn't give a shit about, say, about uh, you know, the casuals. People who aren't going to play this game in a tournament, but maybe just buy it to play it and have fun. 
So, once again, repeated betas that didn't work, not on as many consoles as Street Fighter 4, and a launch that was terrible, of course people didn't buy the game. I mean, it was like the trifecta. Now, it's absolutely hilarious, <clears throat> and the reason that I say that, excuse me, the reason that I say that is because if you actually look at the news that Capcom and the competitive Street Fighter community put out, they completely ignore any of the facts, and they try to, to basically only report what makes them look good. So, for example, oh, big news! Did you hear Street Fighter V has broken all pre-reservation records at EVO? It's going to be the biggest fighting game ever at EVO. To which I respond, who gives a fuck? <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's actually talk turkey here. The only people who are into Street Fighter V are basically fucking competitive gamer heads who watch every gameplay stream and, and fucking the stream monsters who are on the stream. They watch the videos of all the popular Street Fighter players on YouTubes. Oh, and who cares? Because that's not what sells games anymore. You know, that could get some po popularity and some people famous, e-famous, but that doesn't sell games. What sells games is a functional game with content that people like to play and talk about, and that's not what Street Fighter V has become. Street Fighter V has become the quintessential, how do you not make a fighting game? How do you make a game that only caters towards a small group of people, right, who aren't going to be sinking repeated money into the game? And that's the absolute truth of it. Uh, is that, you know, you, you, the people who are going to buy the game have bought the game, and now it's over. <laughs> so how are you going to sell 2 million copies of a game when you've sold a copy of a game to every hardcore Street Fighter player, right? Who's into the competitive community and the streams and the fucking, all the e-celebrities and all of that. It's over for them. So now what are you going to do? And much like I said back in February... When I first played this game in review it, Capcom had zero long-term plan for the game. Zero. They just have no idea what they're going to do now. And they may be fucked. Because this was the game they were banking on. This was the game, the, the final franchise of Capcom. Their final cash cow, right? That they could fall back on and say, Oh, well, even though Resident Evil's gone to shit... And no one wants a new Resident Evil because we ruined that series. And Devil May Cry's gone to shit. And no one's ever going to buy a Devil May Cry game again. Uh, you know, we've ruined all of our franchises. We've run everything into the ground. But Street Fighter's still there. Well, guess what? Not anymore. Sadly, it's just... it's. <laughs> this is it. This was their chance. And they ruined it. Street Fighter V has effectively ruined and tarnished the reputation of Street Fighter forever. And not to say that it's a bad game. I actually think that it's a fun game. I actually think the gameplay of the game is good, but it's not just about that. And that's the problem. That's what Capcom apparently didn't realize when they were making Street Fighter V. It's not about making the highest level competitive game anymore. It's about making a game that will appeal to the masses, that will sell, and will have people playing and talking and watching. And the bottom line is it doesn't exist. What you've got right now is a hardcore fan base, right, of people... Probably the people who are heavily in the Street Fighter are probably a couple hundred thousand. And then you've got some casuals who kind of watch the streams and stuff and who bought the game. And it's not even a million. Worldwide, Street Fighter has gone from the highest selling fighting game franchise to a franchise that doesn't even have a million fans anymore. That's pathetic. Really bad. I mean, I'm very disappointed that this has happened because as you know... Street Fighter is my roots. Street Fighter is what got me into competitive gaming. Street Fighter is what I grew up playing in arcades. And Street Fighter ain't what it's cracked up to be anymore. Thanks to pretty much the worst fucking management team ever. Whoever was behind this game had no fucking idea what they were doing. Had no long-term plan. They're basically a bunch of idiots. <laughs> and anyone could have told them if they had asked that what they were doing was wrong. But, you know... This is what happens. You get these people in power, places in power with these game developers, and they think they have these bright ideas. Sometimes I wish they'd keep that shit to themselves. Because uh, I like Street Fighter. I would I would have liked nothing more. If this game released, it was functional. It had tons of offline content. I was able to cover it properly like I wanted to for like a week or two just playing Street Fighter, covering all the modes and everything, and going online and playing it nonstop. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. The launch was a disastrous fail, and most people got turned off to the game. You know what I mean? 
So today, here we are, we're going to be playing with Guile. And this is funny, because I was saying to the stream chat earlier, um, I booted up Street Fighter V today, I'm like, okay, time to, to, buy, the, to, to buy Guile. Uh, he's already in the game. Now, I didn't buy him. I didn't buy the season pass. I didn't. I want to make that abundantly clear. I didn't buy the season pass or anything. Uh, he's just there. And they explained last month when Alex was released, the first DLC character, they said, oh, Alex will be free for about a month's time, uh, you know, so you can play with him. And, uh, you know, then eventually he's going to be, you have to pay for him to keep him in your game. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. You know, give us a little taste. Of what the DLC characters will be like, but then make them, you know, that way, you know, you'll have to pay for the future ones, and you have to eventually pay to unlock Alex. So here we are over a month later, Alex is still free, and now Guile is free. <laughs> uh, what is going on? I think Capcom may be of, uh, may... <laughs> and, I, you know, listen, I'm not complaining, it's cool that you get to play with Guile for free, but what is their plan here? Did they really fuck this up so badly... Seriously, did they really fuck this up so badly that they don't even have a way to unlock the characters properly? Maybe it's that they never even have the, the store working. And because the store's not working, they're like, obviously we can't have a character in there to buy if you can't buy it. So maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But then why are they releasing the characters? I don't... I'm so confused. I'm just so confused. Shaking my head, I'm just like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but anyway, I really don't care. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I get to play with Guile today. And we're about to do that in a moment. Alright, I'm just sad that Capcom is literally falling apart at the seams. They've now basically destroyed their final, their final staple series. And I hate to say it, but if they go to release another fighting game, I don't think anyone's going to care. I think they're done. I think that they've completely destroyed their sales lead. And uh, that's it. Now you're going to see game developers like um, NetherRealm, right? NetherRealm are going to step up and take up the reins as the leading fighting game developer. Which is kind of sad because honestly, I don't even think Mortal Kombat 10 was that great of a competitive game. I thought it was a fun game because it had tons of content and tons of characters. But I don't think it was a great competitive game. And now here we are. You know, Capcom's turn, and they've completely flubbed it. So I think the next game coming out is going to be Injustice 2. I guarantee you that game, Injustice 2, will by far destroy the sales numbers of Street Fighter V. I'm calling it now. Injustice 2 will be, like, the number one selling fighting game for a while. Because I don't think anyone else can really compare. I don't. NetherRealm knows what they're doing. Even though they don't even necessarily make a game that... Uh, they don't even make a game that's competitively on the level of other people, but they put so much content and production value and shit into their games that the mainstream person will buy it and enjoy it regardless. And that's where NetherRealm does it right. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start the stream. I'm only going to do one plug today. The one plug is very simple. Patreon. There's less than 12 hours left to pledge to my Patreon for the month of April. Today is the final day of April, if you didn't know. <clears throat> and because there's less than 12 hours left, uh, we're kind of uncertain right now whether or not we're going to hit the goal for this month, the funding goal, and to be able to do the Indie Marathon in the month of May. Or it could be early June. I don't want to tell you for sure when it'll happen, but... Uh, yeah, if we hit the funding level for this month, it's going to be a, the return of the Indie Marathon in late May, early June. And right now, we're right on the precipice. Like, we are on the edge of hitting it. And the thing is, I know for a fact that lots of people will end up getting declined. This happens every single month. People get declined for their pledges. And uh, so, therefore, also, I guarantee you by the end of today, many people who've pledged to my Patreon for the month... Uh, are going to lower their pledges because they probably did a big pledge last month and didn't realize it and they're like, oh crap, I gotta lower that. <clears throat> so, if you have not pledged yet, if you'd like to see the return of the Indie Game Marathon that I did many times last year and had a lot of fun doing and played a lot of games for the very first time including stuff like Hotline Miami, Papers Please, Binding of Isaac, <clears throat> just to name a few, please pledge by the end of today. Patreon.com forward slash Phil. You not only get cool personal perks, 
such as being able to nominate and vote on the games that'll be in this indie marathon, but you also get the fact that you contribute to this monthly goal. All right. All right, everyone. I think it is time. It is time to start with the stream of Guile. I thank you for being here and being a little patient. And, uh, all right. I think it's, that's it. Short and sweet. Let's go. There you go. <laughs> 